What do you think when you think of electric vehicles? Probably Tesla, right? While the common thought might be that Tesla was the first one to make EVs, it couldn't be further from the truth. Tesla is centuries late to the electric vehicle game. They've been around far longer than anyone thinks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the history of electric cars, and it goes so far back that you'll be shocked. It all started in the early 1800s. Back then, horse carriages and buggies used to be all jazz. That's all people used to travel from one place to another. It would take days to travel between cities as the horses and the travelers would need to rest frequently, prolonging the travels even more. There were other options too, steam and gasoline vehicles, but those two came with a slew of problems. Steam cars worked well, but you had to carry gallons upon gallons of water with you, and each time you filled up more water, you'd have to wait half an hour for it to heat up enough to turn into steam and then be used to power the vehicle. Gasoline-powered cars were also hard to deal with because finding gasoline along the way was hard. The cars had to be hand-cranked, which took a lot of physical strength, and there was always the chance of them quite literally blowing up. Not only that, but gasoline cars left a trail of horrible stench everywhere they went. All of that gave way to a new type of vehicle to be made. One that didn't require hard physical labor to start, didn't need gallons of water or gasoline, and was safer and easier to drive. That was the electric vehicle. Now, this electric vehicle wasn't really the type that we know today. They didn't really plug into an electrical outlet and charge. These were battery-operated vehicles. Robert Anderson from Scotland was the first to create a moving vehicle that was powered by batteries. In the 1830s, he used galvanic cells to power a carriage, and it worked. But because galvanic cells weren't the most powerful, it was more of a fun, futuristic car that people could appreciate because it didn't really need anything to pull it forward. But it wasn't exactly something you could travel too far with. For the next few decades, it was all about trying to better the battery. Several inventors tried their hand at creating a battery that could really power a vehicle well enough that people could use it. In 1890, that vehicle was finally a reality. William Morrison filed to get a patent on a vehicle he had made three years prior for a local parade in Des Moines. His vehicle was a carriage. It had a front-wheel drive, had four horsepower, and could get to the top speed of 20 miles an hour. This carriage had 24 battery cells that worked together to move the vehicle and needed to be recharged every 50 miles. This was a lot better than the type of vehicles available around the world at the time, so it piqued everyone's interest. By 1894, other people had started trying to make their own better electric vehicles too. Two of these people were Pedro Salom and Henry G. Morris from Philadelphia. They first created an electric trolley car that had steel tires and used 1,600 pounds of batteries to power it. It too was able to reach top speeds of 20 miles an hour, and it did it fast enough to take part in 5-mile sprint races, and even won against gasoline cars. That got more people listening. Every year, more and more people wanted to hop on the electric vehicle trend, especially women who needed an easier way of getting around town on their own. During the early 1900s, electric vehicles started making their way onto the roads right next to gasoline and steam-powered cars, competing with them in the real world. Then came Camille Genetzi's electric sports vehicle, Le Jamais Content, the Never Satisfied. This one was a beast. It was the first of its kind to break the 100 kilometers an hour and the 60 miles per hour barriers. It ran on 200 volts, which was a major step forward in the world of electric vehicles altogether. To this day, you can see racing vehicles with the phrase, the never satisfied, plastered on them. That's the impact this particular vehicle had on the world. The cars were so popular that even Thomas Edison tried to make a better, more efficient battery for them. He believed that they were the superior mode of transportation. They became so widely used that there were even ambulances that were electric-powered and would get people around just fine. This wasn't just a few ambulances here and there. Even President William McKinley was transported in an electric ambulance when he was attacked on September 6, 1901. Thomas Edison managed to create a better battery for electric cars called nickel iron cells, and with them came a car that could use them to move. The car was a success, but it came with a new problem they were expensive. 
Even if you were just to buy the battery itself, you'd have to cough up $600, which just wasn't doable at the time for the masses. Sure, a few people here and there could afford it, but the general public wasn't really going to benefit from these vehicles. Because of that, the hype for electric cars began to die down a little bit. Even though they were getting better, with that, they were also getting more and more expensive. Henry Ford took advantage of that decline, and Ford came out with the Model T the first mass-produced car ever. These cars were revolutionary. They cost half the price of the standard electric vehicle at the time, which meant that people could get them, and they did. Ford sold millions of these cars, and they sold like hotcakes. Well, at least for the next two decades. Until gas prices started going up and up and up. There came the point where driving gas-powered cars became impossible for the common man because refueling would empty your wallets immediately. Because of that, people started moving back to electronic vehicles. There was a second wave underway, and since there had been around 30 years of research into the cars at that point, there was a lot more hope involved. In 1971, electric vehicles were literally out of this world. That's not a figure of speech. It's when NASA sent the first electric vehicle to the moon called the Lunar Rover. The Lunar Rover showed people that not only could electric vehicles be used, but they could also really be trusted beyond the point that people had initially thought. At this point, people began asking, if it's good enough for NASA, why isn't it good enough for us? And it started a movement, one in favor of electric vehicles of all kinds. General Motors was among the first to hop on the trend and started experimenting with their own cars and batteries, trying to find a way to cash in on the new demand that was rising worldwide. For that, they decided to repurpose the Chevrolet and created the Electrovet. It was supposed to go at 100 miles an hour, but when gas prices stalled, the car was shelved and never really made it onto the roads. But cars like the city car actually became popular enough that the company that made them, Sebring Vanguard, became the sixth largest automotive maker in the United States. But it wasn't really an uphill battle from there onwards either. During the mid to late 1970s, interest in electric cars started to fade again. That was because advancements in fossil-fueled cars made it so they could easily travel super long distances, while conveniently refueling on the way. Electric cars still had a long way to go. They weren't able to go very far and were still fairly expensive. That led to people once again moving towards gasoline-powered vehicles instead. But in 1996, a mandate passed in California compelled automotive makers to work on a small portion of cars that were energy efficient. That way, they could still work on the regular cars they were making, but would also research creating cars that were better for the world overall. That same year, General Motors released the EV1, one of the best electric vehicles of that time. The car was received very well by people that had been waiting for an electric alternative to make it to the market. But when you look at the bigger picture, the scale was unequal from the get-go. The EV1 was a two-seater. That way, it was able to stay as light as possible, allowing the car to move a lot faster than if it were a four-seater vehicle. But while it had a cult following, when it came to people that wanted it, it was released into the market where large SUVs were the most popular. But the fact that it couldn't really take the market away from the SUVs wasn't that surprising. It wasn't really supposed to. Where this car was wanted, it had a cult following, but it was clear that you needed something that was a more standard car size and more powerful to be able to compete in any way. Toyota saw the gap in this market, the gap that no one had quite filled in yet and came up with the Prius. Sure, the Prius isn't really a true electric vehicle because it's a hybrid, but it still played a major part in getting the modern world used to the idea of electric vehicles. This one uses batteries to complement the fossil engine and makes it more efficient. It was first released in 2000, but throughout the past two decades, there have been several versions of the Prius, each better than the last, and it's been one of the biggest reasons why electric vehicles even made it to the point that they did. In 2006, we got the infamous Tesla joining the game. It was just a Silicon Valley startup at the time, and with it, Elon Musk shook the automotive industry. Tesla announced that not only would they be making an electric vehicle that everyone was going to love, but it was simply going to be great. It was supposed to be able to go over 200 miles per charge. That number was considered wild at the time, but they had the research and the plans to prove that what they were claiming wasn't impossible. That announcement alone made waves in the automotive industry, 
other companies began amping up their efforts to try to beat Tesla to the punch. At that point, the Department of Energy decided to put in the work too. They began setting up close to 20,000 chargers throughout the US. This was a major push for electric vehicles because it took away that barrier of the cars that don't go far and need a recharge, because suddenly you could charge them pretty much anywhere fairly easily. While Tesla was still working on bringing a fully electric car, GM struck again by coming out with the Chevy Volt. This was the first plug-in hybrid the world had ever seen. It brought the world closer to the idea of what it would really be like to go totally fuel-free for longer distances too. But the car that really made waves at the time was the Nissan LEAF. LEAF started off being produced in the US, but the demand for it boomed so fast that Nissan had to set up production plants throughout the US and in the UK. It became the most sold electric vehicle of all time once it hit the roads. Even today, the LEAF is an insanely popular vehicle. It was one of the first cars to make traveling in an electric vehicle the new normal. In 2009, Tesla released their prototype vehicle, and with it, people all over the US were ecstatic to see how far electric vehicles could go. In 2012, Tesla Model S was released, and it blew away everyone that had ever questioned the potential of electric vehicles. These cars were sleek, beautiful, and more powerful than anyone had ever thought they could be. In the last decade, there have been major advancements in the world of electronic vehicles and most of the advancements have been led by Tesla alone. Even though Tesla vehicles aren't the cheapest ones in the market, they always tend to outsell every other electronic vehicle out there. LEAF still stands at one of the top five, but no matter which market we're talking about, people almost always tend to prefer the Tesla over any other car. Electronic vehicles have been around longer than most fueled cars have. They were effectively one of the main reasons why convenient travel ever became a thing. Throughout history, there have been countless times when electric vehicles ended up becoming the sole reason why companies kept fighting to make better cars, electric or otherwise. But if you think about it, back then, the cars were just being made for convenience and one-upping each other. Yet, the cars kept gaining popularity day by day. Today, the world is a lot different than it was in the 1800s. Today, it's not the one-upping that we need electronic vehicles for. It's the fact that every day that cars are using fossil fuels, there are less of them to go around. Humans have caused climate change to accelerate at levels no one saw coming. Today, electronic vehicles aren't just convenient. They're the one thing we can use to fight climate change. That means that everything that happened in the two centuries of history that went into creating the electric cars has led us to the place where the vehicles are today. We've now got plug-in cars that can gain speeds of 100 miles an hour in under a second, look like spaceships, and feel like them too. And with every passing day, these electric vehicles are getting better and better. Close to 7 million electric vehicles were sold worldwide in the past year alone, which was a 100% increase when compared to the year before that. This steady rise, paired with the rising gas prices everywhere, chances are we're about to see the history of the majority wanting to ditch the fuel for batteries repeat again, and this time fossil-fueled cars might not be able to win the public back. And that's a wrap for this video. Did any part of the history of electric vehicles shock you? Let us know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.